CBS Sports College Football All-America team released today three unanimous selections, including Will Anderson, who would have gone number one in this year's NFL draft had he been eligible. Also unanimous, Texas running back Bijan Robinson and Ohio State wide receiver Jackson Smith and Jigbo. Ohio State had two wide receivers taken in the first round in the top 15 of the draft, but Njigba is coming back. The Buckeyes have three players on our first team offense. Running back Travion Henderson, joined by offensive lineman Paris Johnson. And Bryce Young is our first team quarterback. You would think that'd be an easy selection, but uh, C.J. Stroud is the Heisman favorite right now. Had to be difficult for our panelists. On the defensive side of the ball, Georgia with a couple selections. Jalen Carter, Gilly Ringo, uh, a couple of Alabama selections as well. Joining Will Anderson is Jordan Battle in the secondary. Heading to the second team, that's where C.J. Stroud from Ohio State headlines things at quarterback. Deuce Vaughn is back at Kansas State, running back, great kick returner. And flipping to the defense, our second team preseason All-America team, Nolan Smith Jr. from Georgia. Another one of those guys in the Georgia defensive side of the ball that could be a first-round draft pick, maybe even a top-10 draft pick next season. Don't forget the special teams. Jake Moody is our first-team kicker, and we have some kick returners as well, including Anaya Smith at Texas A&M. Dennis Dodd on the panel helping to select our CBS Sports All-America team, and let's start with the guy who would have gone number one in the NFL draft had he been eligible, Will Anderson Jr. And the big question going into this season, as far as superlatives and awards go, is is can he win the Heisman Trophy? Right now, the fourth shortest odds at 22 to one. Yeah, I think he can, Chris. I'm really excited about just the prospect of that. I spent a lot of time with Will and his family in the off season working on a story that's actually on the site now. And I really deal with that question within the story. Turns out he was really motivated by not being selected as a finalist last year. And look, no one can argue with Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, You know, the Heisman people only took three or five every year. And Aiden Hutchinson, to Will Anderson's credit, finished second in the voting. That's the first time since 1963 a defender had finished second. Now, obviously, Charles Woodson finished first in 1997. But I think the significance of that is that it laid the foundation for the voters. They know who Will Anderson is. Obviously, he's a great player, maybe the best linebacker at Alabama since Derek Thomas. I mean, he's he's got that Lawrence Taylor look about him. So absolutely, he can win it. You know, it's going to be hard for Bryce Young to go back to back. C.J. Stroud, we know, is a favorite. The voters tend to go for offensive players. But if there's a defensive player, given what he has done, Will Anderson last year, was the first player to lead the country in sacks and tackles for loss in at least 13 years from a Power 5 school. That's significant. One of our three unanimous selections to the first team, All-America team here, Ohio State has another. It's another wide receiver. They had a couple taken in the top 15 of the draft, but how about Jackson Smith and Jigba, who exploded in the Rose Bowl? Does he have a chance to be even better than Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave? Well, there's a laboratory somewhere in Columbus (laughs) pumping these guys out and Jackson Smith and Jigbis is the latest. Yeah. Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, he's right in that same, you know, category with these guys. What was it? 337 receiving yards in the Rose Bowl against Utah is going to be the go-to guy this year for CJ Stroud. And, and give credit to Ryan Day for keeping recruiting these guys. The best receivers now go to Alabama and Ohio State, and that's really the end of the discussion. Uh, but yeah, he he's going to be a guy. Uh, look, if you want to talk Heisman, we've already got Will Anderson. We've already got Bryce Young. We've already got, um, you know, backup quarterback CJ, CJ Stroud maybe is the favorite. It's going to be hard for him to get, you know, maybe even invited. But he's going to be the number one force, I think. And we've got Travion Henderson and first team at tailback. That's going to be splitting up a lot of votes. But that's not really the discussion. Jackson Smith and Jigba is that sort of player where he can get open, great hands, he was covered pretty well, actually, for going 337 against Utah uh, and just outlept a lot of guys for Utah. So, yeah, he's going to be a force this year. And Bijan Robinson, the other unanimous selection. And Dennis, uh, usually, uh, as we've seen lately with the, the shelf life of running backs in the NFL, 
you go as soon as you can. Bijan Robinson is back. It's kind of uh, it's kind of surprising to see this day and age a guy like him returning. It is surprising when you know you said the shelf life is what the average player is three years plus. Running backs probably average less than that because look, Chris, you know this. They are used less and less in offenses now as it is. Uh, it's a passing league. Uh, it's not a running league. I was surprised at B. John Robinson State as well. Good good for him. Good for Texas offense, which I think very under the radar is the best in the in the Big 12 this year. Now, we don't know about the defense. We don't know about the offensive line. But as far as pitch and catch and letting that battering ram B. J. Robin, B. John Robinson run the ball, it's going to be elite. And he caught 26 passes last year, so we know he can catch the ball too. So. Good for Texas. Hopefully, B. John Robinson doesn't get hurt like a guy like Will Anderson, you know, doesn't really have to play this year. I mentioned about Will Anderson. He doesn't even have to play football this year. He's that good. He's only held there by that collective bargaining agreement that says you have to stay three years. Dennis, uh, we just talked about our three unanimous selections, and it did not include last year's Heisman winner. I mean, you'd think the returning Heisman winner would be unanimous, but that's not the case for Bryce Young because this year's Heisman favorite is C.J. Stroud. Now, Young did end up in our first team. C.J. Stroud, our second team. How close was that vote, and how do you differentiate the two right now? It was extremely close. And look, you can't go wrong here. We know that. I had C.J. Stroud in there just because of the upside, taking nothing away from Bryce Young, who's going to go down as one of the best quarterbacks in Alabama history. And Heisman-wise, the the voters probably won't give him the award back-to-back, but that's not the issue here. I think Bryce Young's mobility, I don't want to say saved Alabama's season, but they're not playing for the national championship. If he doesn't run around back there last year and make a lot of plays, 41 sacks, by that offensive line. Could have been 60, I think, if uh, if he didn't have that mobility. And you saw what he accomplished in the national championship game, keeping Alabama competitive and leading with 10 minutes to play, with virtually no weapons back there uh, receiving rides. So I don't think you can go wrong. C.J. Stroud, a lot of upside there. Bryce Young, again, maybe right there with Will Anderson, the number one player taken. Uh, I have no problem with him being number one. The defending champs have their quarterback returning, Stetson Bennett. He did not make either one of our teams, but his security blanket did. How about Brock Bowers and the role he's going to play this season again? Love this guy. Has the look of the modern tight end in not only college football, but the NFL, where he can line up in the slot. He can line up outside. He runs very precise routes. Freshman All-America. We saw what he did with 13 touchdown catches last year, Chris. The most in Georgia history as a freshman, and there's so much upside with him, and probably the best tight end room in the country. When you talk about Eric Gilbert, who's come back and should play this year after some problems off the field, and Darnell Washington, who's just a pitch and catch guy in the end zone. He's 6'5", just throw it up and he's going to get it. And Brock Bowers is that guy who's gonna be there on every snap, every play, and is only going to get better. I love him as the All-America tight end. We see the top four this season, and it, it looks like uh, many of seasons past because Clemson is back near the top at number four in the preseason AP poll. Many expecting them to jump right back into the playoff after a bit of a down season. Still won 10 games, but it was a down season for Dabo and company. One of the reasons why is they lost Brian Breezy in the first month of the season. He's on our first team as well. Yeah, and totally deserving. We, we remember him basically from 20 when he was a freshman All-American and only the second player from Clemson to get ACC Defensive Rookie of the Year. You mentioned in the fourth game against NC State, he hurt the knee, ACL, and then had shoulder surgery earlier this year and missed spring practice. So this the action he's getting right now is the first he's had in football in 11 months. So he's chopping at the bit, and when he did play, He was a force, 300 pounds, very nimble, can make plays on the inside, track down runners. Um, He's going to be a great one, already is a great one. And this is really going to be the difference in Clemson, I think, being a playoff team or not. The defense is a given. They're loaded at defensive end. They're very solid in the middle, very good defensively. To me, can the offense keep up? You know, can they win games? Can DJ Uangalele win games? Because as good as that defense could be, they're going to have games where they're, you know, they're, they're going to get scored on uh, just because that's the modern modern you know, pattern of the game. So Brian Brissy is a force in the middle. He anchors that defense. He's a great, great pick. Not surprising. The SEC led the way with 18 total selections from our panelists. The Big Ten second, the only other conference with 
uh, a double digit number with 11. How does that compare to years past? Well, I want to think about years future when in expansion, think about Oklahoma and Texas going there. Uh, think about USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten, 16 and 16, those 32 teams at the top. You're going to have to have an All-American team for those two leagues and then everybody else. And I'm only half kidding because you can see what's happening at the top. But not, not a surprise. Um, it's going to be that way every year. We just see now the consolidation of those brands at the top. I, I was going to look and, you know, counting Texas and Oklahoma. Obviously, B. John Robinson would count as an SEC player if it were two years from now. Uh, USC, UCLA might be involved in there in the Big Ten as well. So it's, it's no, it's no, it's no surprise that those two are at the top. Dennis Dodd with us here on CBS Sports HQ, breaking down our All America selections. You can see the whole list at CBSSports.com. Taking a look at the first team selections on offense. Bryce Young getting the nod barely over C.J. Stroud at quarterback. Bijan Robinson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba unanimous selections along with Will Anderson Jr. on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, also have a couple of kids from Iowa there. How about that? Jack Campbell at linebacker, Riley Moss at cornerback. Hawkeyes unranked to start the season in the AP poll. We'll see about that. Dennis says that that was an oversight by a lot of the voters. Cover 3 podcast reacting to Camp Buzz at Notre Dame and what's going on there. They are number five in the land but not a lot of playoff buzz from Notre Dame. They do have a great recruiting class coming up next year and the year after under Marcus Freeman. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.